In this video, we'll look at a few principles and paradigms of the Android platform, which are essential for you to know if you want to develop apps for Android. The first thing to be aware of is that Android runs across a slew of various devices. For example, like in this emulator, the Motorola Flipout, this is a Droid X, this is a new color, and this is a Motorola Xoom. In the background, on Live Device, that's a Galaxy Tab. So if you design your app and if you layout your app, you should consider that there are very different screen sizes available. This is one of the smaller examples. And the Motorola Xoom is one of the largest examples with 10.1 inch in diameter. So take care that your app scales well. Another thing that's characteristic for the Android platform is that there are hardware buttons. Look at this, for example. There are always those four buttons. This one is for search, this one is for back, this one is for home, and this is for the menu. If you look at the flipout, for example, you'll see that only three of them are there. In this case, the search button is on the physical keyboard. For you as a developer, that means that some of the functionality for your application can be accessed from outside of the screen. For example, you needn't provide a button for back because that's provided as a hardware button. Now let's look at this device in action, the Galaxy Tab. One other thing to consider is that it can react to a change of orientation. Let's have a look at my files. Now if I turn the device, it will switch to landscape orientation mode, like this. Now we have an overview on the left side and a detail view on the right side. If I switch back to portrait orientation, I now have a detail overview. And if I tap on back, I get to the overview. This means that you can have varying levels of information on your screen depending on the orientation. And then there are a few conventions regarding the hardware buttons. Consider climbing into a folder like this. There are no files. Each time I tap on back, it goes to the last view I've seen. Every time I go on back, it goes one step back. And if I've reached the first level and tap on back, I'll leave the application. Let's have a look at this again. Let's go to external SD. There are some files. Now look, every time I tap on back, I get to the previous view. And as soon as I'm on the top level, I'll leave the application. The home button is different. If I'm inside a nested view and hit the home button, I get on the home screen. If I now enter the application again, it will pick up where I left. Now I can again tap on back to go to previous views. The other thing to keep in mind is that the context menu button and the search button are both context sensitive. If I tap on the context menu button here, nothing happens because there's no menu for this view. If I tap on the search button, it will search in my files. Let's have a look at the options menu in the home screen. I'll tap on home. Now I'll tap on the options. Now I can see six options. For example, if I leave this menu and go to my applications and hit the option menu button there, that's a different set of options. Now let's sum things up. First of all, you need to take into account various screen sizes and resolutions. Then there are specific conventions for the Android platform in regard to the hardware buttons. Options menu and search are in context of the current screen. Home goes back to the home screen and especially the back button goes back to the previous view or if it's at the first view of the application, it will leave the application.